Yeah, welcome back to KM6 LYW Radio. This is the show where we talk about amateur radio and emphasis on uh, data or digital modes, trying to rethink them in the uh, the information age, keeping them relevant. Hey, today we've got some cool data modes going on here. I've got two DigiPies operating. Um, one's actually going to be a web server, if you can imagine that, and the other one's just going to be a plain old client. Um, I've got the ICOM 705 hooked up here. I don't know if you can see in the background, I've got a Yaesu 2980 and another DigiPi on the wall over there. And we can, we're can we going to see if we can make them work together, maybe browse the web. Maybe they'll even fight. I don't know. We're going to do that this time on KM6 LYW Radio. <laughs> Welcome back. That's right. That's our cheap bumper music, man. That's all I can afford, you guys. <laughs> but you know, the the Rush stuff is popular. That's we we got some good comments on on Rush last time. Thanks, guys. All right, so let's get back to how do we browse the web using nothing more than a radio. All right, so what we're going to do is uh, leverage the bulletin board system that's on the DigiPi. Now, there's a few pieces of bulletin board software out there. There's the Linux Node stuff. Um, that the DigiPi implements. There's also Lin BPQ, which is another popular bulletin board. And a lot of these bulletin boards will have plugins where you can actually run stuff on them. And in this case, we're going to actually run a, uh, well, let's, for better lack of a better term, a web server. Okay, we're going to run a bulletin board over here on DigiPi 4. That's the one behind me. I can almost put my thumb on it. <laughs> it's right there. And that's running this Yaesu 2980. And then we've also got a DigiPi down low here. Let me make myself a little smaller. A lot smaller down low. We've got another DigiPi down here. This is going to be our client. This is going to be the radio that's browsing the web, and we're going to we're going to operate him using a web browser or our cell phone or tablet. And we're going to use the, we're going to connect the two DigiPies using AX.25 um, via bulletin board, and then we're going to actually look at websites. Okay, I know what you're thinking. Everyone's freaking out. Well, this isn't how I use amateur radio, so you can't use it that way either. Now, and there are some restrictions here. Um, you'll notice I have a dummy load hooked up to this right now just because I can't guarantee the content that's going to hit the radio. And honestly, um, if you're going to be browsing websites over radio, you need to make sure the websites don't ha aren't selling something or don't have some sort of pecuniary interest. Uh, if we're using amateur radio bands, um, that's technically not legal depending on your jurisdiction. Um, so if you do, if you know, it, it, when was the last time you saw a web page without ads, right? So you need to pick them carefully, um, maybe have a web proxy or something in between, or maybe just have a list of fixed websites. Uh, the reason I'm bringing this up just isn't so you can just like, you know, look for, you know, look up you know, how to get tires for your car or order pizza or something. This is really kind of a, with emergency stuff in mind. Uh, for example, you know, we have wildfires here in California and I'd really like to be able to, when the power goes out and there's no internet to just use an amateur radio or have everyone use an amateur radio to log into the bulletin board and get the fire status uh, website. We have some local news um, uh, websites that don't aren't full of ads that really give you up-to-date information on wildfire and emergency and disaster information. So maybe you can integrate this with your airy stuff. But anyways, let's do the cool, let's do some fun radio things. Uh, so we've got DigiPi running on uh, two different Raspberry Pis. The client is down here on my, on my, uh, on the lower right part of the screen. Of course, uh, DigiPi is available to patrons, you guys. If uh, This is just a Raspberry Pi that implements every single digital mode you can think of. All the technology we talk about on this channel is loaded into a single SD card image on the DigiPi, and that's available to patrons. Doesn't mean you can't implement all of this yourself. Um, all of my source code contributions are out on GitHub if you want to download this stuff. In fact, I'll, I'll put some links to that. All right, let's get started. Let's do some cool radio stuff. So we're going to go all the way back to 1980 and basically have a modem uh, connecting. And But instead of using telephone lines, we're going to use radio, okay? We're going to use RF. And I'm actually going to be transmitting through these demi loads. These two radios are close enough to each other. They can hear each other. So, you know, the RF isn't really escaping my property here. But this is just for testing. We're goofing off, having fun. Uh, all right, let's 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 begin. Now, the DigiPi has a web management interface, and currently we are in uh, TNC mode, which is fine. You can see the DigiPi saying that down there. That's our data transceiver. We're on uh, 145.730 megahertz. Now, I'm going to click on AX call down here, and this is just a way to basically like dial a modem, and we can do AX call via radio, and we can enter any radio name we want. Um, in this case, uh, the radio behind me here is called the uh, KM6LYW-4. 
All right, and, and our guy is called KM6LYW-7, um, in case you see, you, you'll see it flying back and forth on the screen there. And I'm just gonna do connect here. Now what's happening is the ICOM 705 is connecting to the Yaesu 2980 and it's DigiPi. You might be able to see a little red light coming on over there. And I'm already connected, it's asking me for my password. I don't know why it echoes that, this is just a junk password. You, you don't win anything by knowing that password. And we're logged into the bulletin board. Isn't this totally like 1980s stuff? You remember like, this is like war games. You remember that movie? Let me make this bigger for you guys. <laughs> so this is the bulletin board. These are the commands you can use to do things. Um, you can see who's on. You can talk to people that are there. You can use the win link man command line interface. But one thing that's on here that I don't think I've ever really told anyone is there's a web command where you can actually download websites. And so again, I'm gonna do this all over the radio. You know, assume I have no power, no internet, no phone, no nothing. All I have is a, DigiPi and an amateur radio and there's a BBS somewhere uh, in this case the BBS is on the other side of the room um, you know of course this could service all of uh, you know northern California or most of your province province so I'm just gonna type web and it's asking me for my call sign all right can you guys hear the traffic it's making noise those are the packets going back and forth and you, you can see the action happening on the DigiPi as well <laughs> the different stations talking. All right, so here we have, uh, it's basically, a, it shows you your bookmarks first, okay? And I have like our amateur radio club, I have, you know, Craiger.org, I just threw that in there for fun. And then Ubinet Fire Information, that's really the website I would like to use. Um, you know, if I'm completely down in the dirt and I've got no power, nothing, um, you know, I can use my radio to see the Ubinet Fire Information. Um, but let's say uh, all we have is radio, and I just want to maybe I just want to look at the Sierra Foothills Amateur Radio Club website. And I just type 100. That's our bookmark. Um, we could type one, and then our, enter our own web address, and you know we could go to Google or something. Uh, but keep in mind, Google is going to be full of ads, uh, so it's going to be you know pecuniary interest problems with that. So you know maybe you have some predefined searches, or maybe some sort of ad blocker. That'd be cool. Um, a lot of people have like a squid proxy set up for this. Hey, this is saying this page is 118 lines long. Are you really sure you want to continue? You know, how long do you want to jam up this frequency? I'm going to say yes, 118 lines is feasible. And you're not going to get a really nice website. How obnoxious is this? Turn it down just a little bit. You know, you're going to see all the navigation links. Uh, you're going to see, you know, the club homepage. You're not going to see any images, of course. This is all text. Um, this is all 1200 baud using AX.25 over the, this bulletin board, this Linux node bulletin board. I'm going to look back on this and think, man, I should have turned down all that packet noise. Let me make this a little wider. It's starting to scroll on us here. But anyways, um, this is saying, you know, this is the Sierra Foothills Amateur Radio Club website. You know, we've got upcoming club, upcoming club presentations. Thanks to everyone who attended the July meeting and hot RF nights. Here in California, yeah, we do have hot RF nights. <laughs> so this is our the, the website for the local club, and we're getting it all over radio from uh, from this Raspberry Pi down here, and we're connected to the one back here. And this one honestly could be anywhere in Northern California. So at this point, if I wanted to click on a link, and you're thinking, well, how do you use the mouse to click on a link? Well, you notice every single link has like a number next to it. You know, I can, I can actually type in those numbers to follow those links. Um, so I think uh, I don't know. We have. Uh, we have nets, so link number two would be our nets. Maybe I don't know, you know, what our, what our net is. So I'm just going to type two, hit enter, and it's going to follow that link and show us the nets that we have here at the W6EK Amateur Radio Club. And it says 110 lines long. Are you sure I want to continue? Yeah, that's not too bad. We can do that. Plus, remember, I'm, I'm operating on dummy loads right now, you guys. So it's not like I'm totally jamming this frequency. It's funny how, you know, just two dummy loads, I get full, you know, S9, like 10 over. <laughs> just transmitting through a dummy load. Just the, you know, the background radiation that's coming through these. So, hey, here's the nets coming down from the Sierra Foothills Amateur Radio Club website that I'm getting exclusively through Amateur Radio. And here we got the Coffee Break Net. Hey, that's available on All Star Link. Anyone can join the Coffee Break Net to where anything goes and often does. Every day, 7.30 Pacific, the Coffee Break Net. Um, so, and we have Elmer Net, Aries Net, uh, those types of things. So there's more information there. So I actually, I'm browsing the web uh, using my, uh, using nothing more than amateur radio. Isn't this cool? Hey, the last thing I wanted to show you is the real, um, let me see, uh, main, I'm going to go back to main menu. I'm going to hit M. 
is our fire stuff. And this is the one that's really, it's a lot more serious. Um, so, you know, if we're in a real jam, I'm gonna enter uh, 300 to go to UBinet fire info. If I wanted to, I could type one, you know, and enter my own URL. Uh, yeah, that's cool too, but the bookmark's easy. So I'm gonna use bookmark, num bookmark number 300, UBinet fire information. And this radio is contacting the radio behind me over AX.25 and just asked it to download that website. Now the radio behind me needs to have internet access, right? This isn't magic. You know, we assume this radio behind me is somewhere else in a part of the state that has power, or has internet. Wow, my guy down here, uh, he doesn't have he doesn't have anything. All he has is RF. Uh, this is 208 lines long. Am I sure you want to continue? Yeah. Um, you know, if it's going to be over like 300 lines, it's, it's a little dodgy. You'll notice the maximum transmit unit changes. You know, the packets are real short at first, but you know, if the connection's good, they start getting longer because they're coming through about, you know, 1500 bursts. That was a long packet and those packets get longer and longer depending on the quality of the, you know, of, of RF conditions. So it happens pretty fast. Um, so here we are. Of course, it shows all the navigation for the website. Um, there's a donation here. Um, this is a nonprofit thing. So again, here, pecuniary interests. Is this site legitimate on amateur radio? You know, should I, can we actually be transmitting that? I don't know. Depends on your jurisdiction. Um, so let me make this a little bit wider. Um, we actually see the fire information is coming up here. Um, I'm going to scroll back up a little bit. Um, I can see all the fires and their status uh, you know, for evacuations and emergency stuff. This is important. The one I've been following is the Yeti fire. It's up in Happy Camp. Walt, that's where your mom and dad are. I know they had to evacuate. Um, I, I can see it's 90% contained. The last update was August 20th. Um, or not a scheduled containment date. Um, but anyways, these are different fires in, in the area and the amount and number of acres, like the, the McKinney fire, 60,000 acres, 95% contained, but 60,000 acres were destroyed in, in Northern California. And of course, you know, they have the weather outlook, of course, in California, it's hot, dry and locally breezy conditions. You know, that's fire weather here. That's something we really want, that really watch. That's something we pay attention to. Um, so we did it. We actually browsed the web. I'm gonna see if I can get out of here. I don't do wanna go to main menu. I just wanna quit. There we go. So I've actually quit it here, and I'm going to say, uh, I don't know, I'll leave it open for a while. So if you want to implement this yourself, um, the code for the web server is here at uh, on my GitHub account for Craiger L. Um, I really have to give props to uh, PE1RRR. He's the one who wrote this, okay? PE1RRR, I didn't write this. He's got an updated version called browse.sh. In fact, you'll find that in my GitHub account. I just mirrored it as well. I had to make some tweaks. It tries to use squid by default. Um, so browse is maybe a little more robust. A little more robust. Uh, he actually says he improved the text throughput for HF. So uh, check out PE1RRR if you want to get the original. His his INETD services, you know, this is for, for the Lin BBQ bulletin board or even Linux node. I've got his stuff running under Linux node. That's what you just saw. And of course, you can see the DigiPy versions of these here um, at my GitHub website, which is Krager L and then slash DigiPy is where all of, all of this stuff is. Um, and it's pretty easy to edit. You know, if you guys want to hack on this, it's totally cool. If you look at the node underscore web, this is all written in bash. Um, let me make this a lot bigger. This is incredibly hard to read. Um, this is the code that you just saw. This is the web server that was happening on the radio. Um, and if I look for like Ubinet, you can see this is where you put the bookmarks in. So you can edit this file and just use this as an example, add your own bookmarks. Uh, but do be careful, you know, when having users enter their own web addresses, you know, they're going to, it's, you don't know where they're going to go and if the content is legitimate for amateur radio in your particular jurisdiction. Uh, what else? So how did, how did we implement this? Um, let's see if I can pull up a shell on a DigiPy. You know, on all DigiPies, we can pull up a shell. Remember, you don't need special software. All you need is a web browser to drive the DigiPy. <laughs> this is the hacky stuff. If you guys kind of see how this was integrated, um, you, get, you don't need to know this. Uh, so if you see the uh, ETC AX25, um, you're going to find, uh, let's see, what was it? Uh, grep. I can't remember where I put it. Uh, I think it's a node.conf. 
So you go into node.conf, you know, if you've got a bulletin board going already, and this is where you can add programs to, or basically set up your main menu for the bulletin board. You know, here I can see I have the Zork command, and it's an external command, and it actually runs the Zork shell script. Uh, web is no exception, so this is the web command. So when I typed web at the bulletin board, it actually runs user local bin node underscore web dot sh. Uh, and, and that's how it works. So this is kind of the hacky part. You don't need to know this. You don't need to know command line stuff. If you have a digipy, this is already built into the, your digipy. So if you want to run an old fashioned bulletin board system on your digipy over amateur radio, you certainly can. You know, for Aries types of things, uh, like when we have, you know, power outages here and wildfires, you know, our club will actually host a net. And we can say, hey, this is where gas is available. This is where water is available. This is where power is. Remember, when the power goes out, we lose all our gas stations and stuff too. So, you know, we'll have a, an online net. So what you could do is just keep updating a website and so for all the people who have no internet access, um, they could just use the bulletin board system to uh, get all of the emergency information they need from your, your Aries group. But anyways, that is how you do bulletin board stuff on the Digipies and specifically how to browse the web over radio. Uh, be careful when you do this. Again, make sure you're, you know, the content is legitimate for amateur radio. You know, if you want to do uh, some other, if you want to do whatever browsing you want or use encryption, you, you certainly can't use encryption, buy a different frequency don't use the amateur radio frequencies you know there's there's lots of other frequencies that would, would be better suited for uh, you know commercial types of, of interests um, especially if you want to use encryption um, you know maybe you want to do your banking <laughs> don't use amateur radio use a different frequency um, I, don't, I don't know can you do encryption on some of the other non-amateur radio frequencies like frs you know family radio service i don't know that'd be something to look into all right hey thanks for hanging out with me you guys um, i've got to get back to the patrons here you guys make this possible uh patreon.com slash km6lyw you guys paid for a lot of this stuff you paid for a lot of broken hardware i've smashed up a lot of these things <laughs> trying to get stuff working uh foo steve brian jake michael christopher tony uh, mark ryan bill Ian, Jim, Brad, thank you guys. Uh, you guys have been with me the longest. That's why you're at the top of the list. I really appreciate the, the ongoing support. Uh, Kevin Durst, uh, Mihai, uh, John, Mark, Robert, Hans. Thank you, Hans, uh, Bud, Mark. <laughs> This is still going. I think I still have an AX.25 connection go, going. Ziggy Zog, Lynn, James, James Brown. Yes, sir. Max, uh, Jurgen. Thank you. Thank you, Ernest. Uh, Lig, Ligonling? Ligonling? Tell me how to say that. I, I don't know how to say that. Sorry. Uh, Steenar, thank you very much. Osmosis, yeah. I appreciated the email exchange the other day. Um, uh, let me know if you get that uh, SDR radio working with the DigiPi. There's a new really cheap SDR radio. Let me see if we can get working. And then it goes all the way down to Chris. Thank you, Chris. All right, guys, this has been another KM6 LYW radio extravaganza. My name is Craig. I'm in uh, California, and I am clear.